Hi, and welcome back to the Quilter's Candy Shop, where you will find sweet treats for the discerning quilter. My name's Carrie, and I'm the owner of the Quilter's Candy Shop, and we are happy that you are here with us today. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. We are doing a sew along with the Rainy Days Quilt pattern from Poppy Cotton. And we think this is totally adorable and we're building a garden of cute calico prints and you are welcome to join us. It's not too late to join our sew along. All you need is to purchase the Rainy Days Quilt pattern and you can find that on our website at www.thequilterscandyshop.com. That's thequilterscandyshop, S-H-O-P-P-E.com where you will find the pattern and a quilt kit if you would like, or you can choose fabrics from your own stash. We are about halfway through our sew along and we are doing some beautiful work, I think. Last week, we did the poppy. And it is a super cute uh, round top with a little center and the four leaf stem. And I did mine in green and I thought they turned out so cute. We did the light green. Did this nice country olive and this super cute vintage calico. So these, along with these, we're getting quite the garden put together. And we've got one more that we're doing this week. And that is the tulip. So the tulip is right here. It's got another four leaf stem. I know it's a lot of leaves and we still got more to go, but just keep plugging along. You'll get them. And it's got a cute little flower with a center. And we had such good luck with our centers before. I'm sure we're going to do great. So let's talk about fabric. All right, here are the fabrics I'm going to be using. If you're following along with the Hollyhock Lane, you're going to be making your tulips out of yellow as in the pattern, but you can also make them out of whatever color you like. I'm also going to be using yellow and I'm going to be doing three different tulips. You can do three different tulips or you can do three completely different colors or you can do them all the same. That's the creative part and that's completely up to you. I have this really nice uh, gold that I'm going to be using for the center of my tulip. And I have this really cute vintage calico that I'm going to be using for the leaves. This is flower number three, and it's called the tulip. And we're going to be making three of these flowers. The pattern itself is very simple, but we are going to be making these new flying geese. And that's going to be our new thing we're learning to this week. All right. Let's get this cut. Okay, so here we have all the pieces for flower number three, the tulip. Just remember, you're going to be making three of these flowers and the pattern instructions are for one. So you will need to multiply the number indicated by three. And so here's what we have. You're going to cut piece number A and you need two of these per flower. That's the same with B, two for each. And C, you need four for each. D is the center. All my centers are going to be the same. And you need a total of 12 for all of the flowers. That's also the same with the leaves. I'm doing all my leaves the same. So I'm going to need 12 leaves. But you could make your stems and, and leaves all different with the different flowers. So just know you're going to need four for each flower. Three stems will do it. And then the background is the same. Whatever the number indicated that you need, you'll have to multiply by three. So for N, M, Q, S, and T, those are all your background pieces. Well, that's it. Let's get sewing. 
So I went ahead and put one of the tulip blocks together so we can see the anatomy of this quilt block. We're doing the four leaf stem again. So this part is going to go together exactly as the last two flowers. As far as the tulip itself, this is very similar to the way we did the four petal posy along with the center. And now we've added this section in here. And this is the new thing. This is called a flying geese. And so we will be doing step by step this flying geese and putting the tulip together. There are some very specific pressing instructions I'm going to give you here that might look a little different than the instructions. So I encourage you to watch this section all the way through and then start on yours. Okay, once again, we have the four leaf stem for this flower. And this is exactly the same as the previous two weeks. So if you have any questions on how to do these, refer back to the uh, third week video and it'll show you step by step of how to do the stitch and flip for the leaves. Now some of you have had some questions about accuracy in using the diagonal tape and I do have a couple tips for you on that. So here's the leaf piece and here's the background that I'm going to stitch and flip on. The very first thing that you have to be aware of is these two edges need to be lined up exactly. Now, if you need to stick a pin in there to hold that in place, go ahead. It's not going to change anything. In fact, it'll help you keep it in place. But this is, this is the first important step. Next, we have a tendency to set this down here where we can see this line and this line, and we think we have it all lined up. And then we, so, before we bring this up, but look what's happened already. Because there's fabric, this is at an angle, so because there's fabric on this feed dog only and not over here, it's pulled this out of alignment. Now, when you sew, you're going to have to keep adjusting this over. So the better way to get started, once you have your edges perfectly aligned, is to put your needle in the down position, lift your feed dogs, and put that point right up. You can see it right there, right there. Put the point right up to the needle, and now have your point lined up here. Now the pressure on the feed dogs is more even, and you're going to get your first stitch is going to go in the right place. So couple stitches. Look at that. Everything's nice and in alignment. Now the third tip for keeping these good and accurate is so slow. I know it feels like you want to go fast because you're trying to get this done, but if you slow, if you slow your stitches down, you have better control over your pieces. So let's do it again. First thing is make sure your edges are all in alignment. And feel free to put a pin in down here outside of the stitching line if you like. That will hold things in place. So lift the, the presser foot, slide the point right up to your needle line this up for your scant seam allowance and then the next thing to remember is not to hold down too tight in here because this is bias and it will stretch so you want to let the feed dogs do the work you're just trying to keep it in place slowly stitch right onto the fabric and then on down This is going to give you a much more accurate stitch and flip on the corners. Let's see how we did. These are the ones we just did with the uh, instructions for a little better accuracy. 
We're going to set the seam. And then here's how we're going to tell how we did. Flip this over and look, matches perfectly. We have a straight line across here and we have a straight line across here. Those are two ways that you can tell if you've done your stitch and flip properly. Number one, when you fold it over, everything matches to the point. Number two, that the piece that comes across lines up with the additional piece and there's not any wonky or missing spots. Okay, so that should be helpful. Get the rest of your leaves done and then I will meet you back here when your stems are done and we will work on the flowers. All right, so here we have all the pieces that we need for the flower. Now the pattern has you start with these the flying geese first but we're going to save that until we do the bottom part of the tulip the reason we're going to do this first is a lot of this is exactly like the four petal posy we've already done so this is going to go very quickly so the first part we're going to do is the center uh letter d just like in the four petal posy so what we did, if you recall there, is you can just put this, sew all of these into this corner and sew all of these into this corner. Just place them and sew them and then treat these two shorter pieces just the same as this. So these are going to get a D in this corner and this corner for one flower and this corner and this corner for the other flower so these are all the inner corners we're going to do these first so we don't lose track of where the centers are remember if you're not using the diagonal tape you're going to need to use a pen and mark your line and then uh, stitch and flip. So we're using the diagonal tape. So I'm just gonna go right to the machine and sew. And for accuracy, you can use the same technique that we used on the leaves to get these nice and straight. Go ahead and do the rest of these and then we'll come right back to it. Okay, here we have our centers sewn on on with the stitch and flip diagonal set the seam now just like the four petal posy we have to press these in a specific way because these points are going to match these seams have to be seam allowances have to go in the opposite direction so this one we're going to press up And then this one is going to press under. And you go all the way around. So this one has to press up. And this one is going to press under. Now, after you trim the seam allowances, when these come together, these two points are going to nest. Okay, we've got these pressed in their proper order, and I've got the seam allowance trimmed back. Before we sew these together, we need to do the bottom corner of the tulip. So this is uh, goes in these bottom corners here and here. Stitch and flip to make the round bottom of the tulip. All right, here we've got the two bottom corners sewn on the diagonal. These are not going to touch anything else. They're going to get a sashing along here and they're going to attach to the leaves at the bottom. So I recommend that these be pressed 
to the underside this way. It just makes a cleaner edge because you don't have the seam allowance showing here and you have the weight of the piece to hold everything in place. So just like before, there we go. I'm going to stick these with the clapper. We're going to move on to the next step. Okay, I've already trimmed my seam allowance left over from my little corner pieces. And now I have these back sitting in this four patch. It's still a four patch, even though these are a different size or shape or whatever. This seam and this seam, when it comes together, is still a four patch. So what we're going to do is first sew these two pieces together, nesting our seam allowance right here and these two pieces together nesting our lining everything up and nesting our seam allowance right here if you want to put a pin in here to hold that in place that's perfectly fine so we're going to sew this and we're going to sew this come right back okay we've got our two pieces together and i didn't press these yet i'm just finger pressing these so that i know this seam allowance is going this way and finger press this this Finger, seam allowance goes this way finger pressing is just a good way to do a temporary press you can just run along here with the heat of your fingers don't pull too hard because you don't want to stretch the fabric but it's a good way to just get things to lay down where you want them and now with those finger pressed i can flip this over in order to nest this seam if you recall, we did this in the four patch posy, and what we're doing is spinning our seam. So you can see here, the seam allowance here is going this way, and the seam allowance here is going this way. And that nests, and we have to nest our points as well. If you want to put a pin in here and here and here, it's a good way to keep things from shifting. All right, let's sew it. Now you can use your fingers to feel that angle and make sure it's nice and lined up and nested. All right, then make sure the center is nested and all in the right place. And then this next guy, make sure he's laying in the right place. Just like that. Bring the points together at the bottom. And so all the way down. All right, let's see what that looks like. And when we open this up, beautiful. Our points all match. Our center matches, except for all the flotsam and jetsam, but that's just part of quilting. Okay, now when we open this, we have this seam allowance going this way, this seam allowance going this way, and we want the seam allowances to go around so we're going to twist these like this so this seam allowance goes this way this seam allowance goes this way and in the center this opens up and we get this cute little four patch and you can if you want the for neatness sake just Pull apart those couple of threads there so everything lays flat. All right, let's press that so you can really see it. All right, here we are. The seam allowances are going around in a circle like this. But don't forget to keep your angles going their same direction. You know, this wants to pop up, but it, it really needs to lay down here. So we're going to just force it to lay down. 
and do what we say. All right, and press that center patch. All right, can you see the four patch right here for the four patch of our block? Let's look on the front side. Look how great that looks. Now with a little pressing, you can see here, this is why we do a scant quarter inch. This needs to go up and over this, the thread, and then we can press it just a little better with our iron. Now someone made a comment that I was pressing too hard. Um, what you don't know is that this is a brand new ironing board, and the foam, see, is very, very fluffy. So the foam will flatten out in a little while, and it won't be look like I'm pressing things out of shape. I'm really not pressing that hard. It just looks like it because I'm on this foam ironing board. All right, so we go all the way around, making sure those seam allowances are going the right direction and laying nice and flat. And there we go. There's the bottom half of our tulip. Let's go make those points. Okay, so here we are with the new step we have not done before. And this is called the flying geese. And when you see this block, this is basically a triangle here. This is the goose and this is the sky. Or some people call these the wings. I like to refer to it as the wings, uh, but you can also call it the sky. It's fine. And these are done in a stitch and flip, same as what we've been doing, but there's one little part to note that's different than what we've been doing before. So as you can see on the leaves, we've been doing the stitch and flip on opposite corners. So we never have these two parts meet. And in fact, even if we were to put these on the same side, you see they're smaller than the piece we're on. So they would never touch in that middle. So these are different than the flying geese. The important part of the flying geese unit is that the two stitch and flips are done in such a way that they leave this point with a seam allowance. So when we go to attach this part here, there's plenty of seam allowance to leave this beautiful point. So that's going to be our goal. These go on the top of our tulip like this. Okay. So now you know where they go. Let's make a set. For one flower, you should have four of these C squares and two of the backgrounds marked Q. Two of those go with one background and two of these go with one background. This is basically stitch and flip, but it has to be done in a particular order. It doesn't matter which side you start with, but when you do all of your flying geese, you're going to want to do them all the same. So we're going to start with the one on the right first. You match up just like any other stitch and flip, match up these edges very nicely. And you have to remember exactly which direction we're going to put the angle. You can make the angle go this way, or you can make the angle go this way. And that may cause trouble with your flying geese. So we're going to do the right side. And if you have a friction marker, you're going to want to mark across here with your ruler. I'm going to just remember with my good memory that I'm going this way. Set the point down, lift your presser foot and get the point right up to your needle. Line up for a scant seam allowance and stitch moderate to slow speed so you have good control. 
We're only going to do one piece at a time so we make sure we get this right. So I'm going to move my thread saver and take off my piece and bring it over here. Now, if I left that and went and put the next piece on and sewn across, see, it crosses here. And we would be able to fold this one back, but not this one. So you have to take care of this one completely. So let's go to the ironing board. So this is the one place where every step is going to get pressed before you go on to the next. And in this case, on this right side, we're always going to fold out first. So we're just going to fold it over. And press this one out. Okay, so this is one that is just pressing over the top. And now we're ready to put the next wing on the flying geese. So you match that up exactly. See, we're going to cross over here. And now you know you've got to sew this way to complete this triangle, right? So let's stitch it. All right, and now it looks like this. Now this one is going to get pressed under and i wish we were alive so i could ask do you know why and of course i know you know because these flying geese are going to go next to each other like this and we have these two points so that means this seam allowance is going this way this seam allowance is going this way and now when i sew these together this point will nest and i'll get a beautiful point like this so let's press this one so we're pressing this one under i got a little short here but i have plenty of seam allowance so this is going to work out just fine let's do the other one so we've got one made here let's do this one we're going to do it exactly the same way we're going to do the right side first everything matches up i almost did that wrong so i have to sew from here to here Okay, we're going to press this over. In the beginning, if you've never done flying geese before, I recommend doing them one at a time and always bringing them back to the position they're going to go so you always get the angle going the right direction. It's very easy to sew the wrong way. And here we want to sew from here to here. If you're an experienced seamstress or you've done flying geese before, you can easily do these in chain stitching or assembly line sewing by just getting all the corners on one side done, pressed, trimmed, and then all the corners on the other side done. But for this demonstration, we're going to just do these one at a time. So now I got to sew across here. Set the seam. Now this one I have pressed out. So this one I have to press under. We're just going to let that sit for a second. Okay, trim the seam allowance. And voila, flying geese. 
a lot of times these are in quilts uh like for example they may look like this and so when you have a lot of these in a row as you can see they kind of look like geese flying across the sky in that v formation and that's why they're called flying geese we're going to use these on the top of our tulip to make the pointy part of the flower like this so we're going to sew these two together by nesting these points right here lining everything up and stitching right across there a scant quarter inch oops <laughs> wrong tulip top there we go all right and now since this is done separately this is a little bit different than the way the instructions implied. They actually didn't give exact instructions on the pattern. So after making a couple of these, I found it's best to put this four patch together, put these together separately, and then you can put this on to nest your seams in the center. And it lays much, much flatter. First, we have to press this guy. Okay, I have my seam allowance going this way at the top of my tulip. So I need my seam allowance going this way for the little spikes. I'm going to press that. And mind your, mind your seam allowances. These are easy to get kind of flipped because you got a lot going in a lot of directions all right and so now I'm going to put that on here and now you can see I'm going to nest that up perfectly look at that and I'm going to use some pins because here's a very important part we get three pins The first pin is going to hold this center nested seam right in place. So we don't want that to shift. It's right in the center of our flower. The next thing, so if I fold this seam allowance back, can you see the little X that the stitching has made? That is the point of my tulip. So I want my stitching line to come right across, right across the top, not through the X, but across the top of that X. So I'm going to stick my pin right here that shows me where my X is and hold everything in place. Same on this one. So. There's my X point, and I want to go right across the top, line this up, fold my seam allowance back down, and pin it. All right, now we'll sew it. So there's my X. That's where I'm headed for. And it should be right at the quarter inch if we did everything the right way. So there again, there's my X. Can't wait to see how did we do. All right, we'll open it up and look at that. Pretty good. So it's a little short here, but it's not going to make a difference. I think it looks really good. And I was a little over the top here, but again, once I press that out, I think it's going to be fine.
The other, so these two places are the first most important to make sure you get this lined up right. And then the next most important is to make sure you've got enough quarter inch here. So when you sew across, you don't cut off the top of your tulip. Let's press it and see how it's going to look. All right. All right, what do you think? I think it looks great. Let's put some stems on this puppy and be done. Ah, oh, so cute. Okay, I'm going to remind you one more time. This is a very simple flat side, so we're going to put this down. This will allow us to manage our seam allowances here. Now, I have been pressing my seam allowances down on this section right here. You could also press them open, but I'm just going to stay consistent with how I'm doing mine. And you should stay consistent on how you are doing yours. Oops, got a little seam allowance out of control here. Random thread. Who ever heard of that on a quilter? There we go. All right, there we go. I'm going to get my other tulip done and then we'll come back and check them out. Okay, here we are. All three of our cute little tulips done. I'm really happy that I chose the yellows. I think they're really sweet and I really like this. Um, burnt umber in the center and that's going to tie in with my four pet four petal posies and i think we did a good job all of the points are matching in the center and all of my points are matching on my tulip if you have trouble with that please put a comment down below and i'll be happy to answer any questions you have or if you need more detailed instructions we can make that happen but Overall, I'm really happy. And you know, this makes our fourth flower in this series. There's only seven, so that means we're more than halfway done growing our calico garden. So join me next week where we'll work on our next flower and we will continue to sow a sweet little garden.